Hey kids, it's Mrs. Compton, and today we are going to do your chapter 5 review. So we are going to start with number 1 on page 211. The camping club wants to rent rafts. Each raft can hold 8 people. Which equation could be used to find how many rafts are needed for 32 people? Okay, so the first thing I want to do before we even look at our options is I want to make sure we have the picture in our minds, right? So we know for sure that each raft can hold eight people, and we know that there is a need to hold 32 people. Okay, so we are trying to figure out how many rafts we need. So we are trying to figure out how many groups of rafts we need. So with that in mind, we know what the picture looks like. Let's look at A. Eight groups of 32. Well, I'm not sure that that could match because that would mean like eight rafts with 32 people in each raft. So that doesn't seem to match. Hmm. Check out B. 32 times what equals eight? All right, let's look at C. What times eight makes 32? That seems to fit the thing that we were thinking about with how many rafts or how many groups of rafts would we need and eight people per raft equals 32 people in all. So I think this one is it, but let's look at D. 32 times eight equals, hmm. Well, in all of these choices, A, B, and D, we're gonna get a, um, Actually, that's not really true. In A and D, we're going to get a very large number. And we're just trying to figure out how many rafts we need for 32 people. So I know I can eliminate these. A and D, that, those are definitely not options. So then it would be between B and C. But C really seems to fit what we're looking for. So um, this would be the number of rafts needed, eight people in each raft. 32 people total. All right, so let's do it. Let's mark C. Number two, select the equations that show the distributive property. Mark all that apply. Okay, now I want you to make sure that you know what the distributive property is. The distributive property takes a number and breaks it apart. It's distributed. Just like when your teacher or your parents would ask you to pass out something like set the table and you get a, um, a stack of plates and you distribute the plates out to each setting. So you're breaking the total number of plates into smaller numbers. All right, so that's the distributive property. Let's look now. Eight times 20 is the same as eight times 10 plus 10. All right, so that's a lot of information. I like to start here with the simple piece. Eight times 20. All right, so I can see that in my head. Now, is it the same as eight times, and then in parentheses, 10 plus 10? So let's see. We have an eight here and an eight here. And then we have to see, does this still equal 20, 10 plus 10? Well, 10 plus 10 does equal 20, and it does have the multiplication sign. So I think these would fit the bill. This is the distributive property. They broke apart the 20 into 10 and 10. All right, check out the next one. 5 times 60 is the same as 5 times 20 plus 40. All right, let's look. We've got a 5 and a 5. So you get a different color. So five and a five. So those are the same. We have multiplication on both sides. And then 60. So was the 60 broken up? 20 plus 40 does equal 60. So it looks like those are also a match. So that one is a yes for the distributive property. All right. This one we've got 30 times 6 is the same as 6 times 30. Well, that's true, 30 times, uh, 30 times 6 is the same as 6 times 30, but nothing was broken apart. 
They just used the commutative property. They moved the 30 and 60. So that one's a no. All right, let's check out D. Um, 9 times in parentheses 4 plus 3 is the same as 9 times 7. Okay, I'd like to start over here. It just makes it easier for myself. So this one has more stuff going on. I just start here. Okay, so we've got a match with a 9 and a 9. All right, so 9 and a 9. And then the 7 was distributed out or broken apart into a 4 plus 3. 4 plus 3 makes 7. We still have multiplication. So that one is a yes. So we've marked all that apply. Number 3. Choose the number from the box that makes the sentence true. A library has 48 shelves of fiction books. There are six shelves in each cabinet. Okay, so I want you to stop to imagine that. We have 48 shelves of fiction books. So 48 shelves. And there are six shelves in each cabinet. Okay. So 48 shelves. There are six shelves in each cabinet. There are hmm cabinets of fiction books in the library. All right. So what we're really thinking about is, um, let's see. We know that there are six shelves in each cabinet. So we know we are going to have six times a number equals 48. Or we could say the other way around. We could say n times 6, right? So really, what that's what we're thinking about here. Um, so what do you think? 6 times what equals 48? So 6 times 5 equals 30. 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times 7 is 42. And 6 times 8 equals 48. So I think we'll choose this one, 8. Number 4. For numbers 4a through 4d, choose true or false for each equation. All right. Let's see what we've got. All right, number 4a, 5 times, in parentheses, 4 plus 4 equals, or is the same as, 8 times 5. I don't know if you realized I was saying this in the last one, but when I'm reading these true-false ones and trying to figure out if they're the same or not, I actually say, instead of saying equals, I say is the same as. It just helps me think about what I'm doing. Okay, so let's see. We've got a 5 on this side times 8. Over here, we've got a 5 and a 5 times times. Okay, now it looks like the 8 was distributed into a 4 plus 4. So that is a true. Okay, let's check out B. 8 times, in parentheses, 3 plus 3 is the same as 8 times 5. All right, so we've got an 8 and an 8 on either side of the equation, times, times. 3 plus 3 does not equal 5, though. So that means I'm going to do this special slash right here through the equal sign. That means these are not equal. So the answer here is false. C says 3 times 5 plus... 5 times 5 is the same as 8 times 5. Okay, so I can see that the 5 was um, broken up, or at least it looks like it's right here and right here. And it looks like the 8 was broken apart into a 5 and a Three. So would that work? I think it would. Um, let's actually take a peek at what that would look like using a model. So if we have 8 times 5, so we'll put a 5 here 
and an eight here. And let's say we're we were saying to ourselves, you know, I don't have eight times five memorized, so I think I'm gonna break it into I think I'm gonna break the eight into a, a five and a three. Is that true? Does five plus three still equal eight? And then we would have here five times five. And here we would have three times five. So now you can see three times five shows up here and five times five shows up here. So then we would add the partial products together. So this one, I think we've got an official true. All right, next step. I'm gonna erase this so we have some more space to work. All right, here we go. Three times two in parentheses plus eight times three in parentheses is the same as eight times five. All right, let's check it out. Do we have the eight distributed out somewhere? I see it here. I don't see it anywhere over here. Let's see, I see the five has been broken up into a three and a two. So that one I can find, three and two. But then something weird happens here. The eight is not showing up over here. So I think we've got to write false. Okay, next step. Let's see. I'm looking at this name and I'm thinking, Ilya? I'm going to go with Ilya. Ilya planted 30 trays of flowers. Each tray hel held eight flowers. Javon planted 230 flowers. Did Ilya plant more flowers than Javon, the same number of flowers as Javon, or fewer flowers than Javon? All right, so make sure you have that picture in your mind. We've got Ilya planted 30 trays of flowers. Each tray held eight flowers. And then Javon uh, planted 230 flowers. Okay, so we are trying to figure out who planted more and who planted less. All right, so let's check it out. Uh, we've got Elia with 30 trays times 8 flowers per tray. And that will give us the number of flowers. Ooh. Okay, so we have to solve eight time, uh, 30 times 8. So let's do it. So 30, I'm going to think about as three tens. That just makes it a little bit easier for me to multiply. So three tens times 8 is the same as 24 tens. Now 24 tens is the same as 240. Ooh, I was just thinking about this. This is the number of flowers planted by Elia. So we should probably mark that down. Okay, so Elia planted 240. Javon planted 230. That means Elia planted more flowers. Okay, so here we go. Letter A. Number six. For numbers 6A through 6D, choose yes or no to show whether the unknown number is six. All right, so they're asking anytime you see like a gray box or anything, we have to put a six in it and see if it makes sense. All right, so 6a says four times, let's type in a six. Four times six equals 32. Is that true? So let's see. If we count by four six times, will we land at 32? 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. Uh-oh. 4 times 6 equals 24, so that's a no. Okay, let's put a 6 in here. 6 times 6 equals 36. Is that true? If you count by, well, actually, if you do 5 times 6, you know that's 30. So 6 times 6 is one more group of 6. So that's a... Yes. All right. 6C says 8 times, 
Hmm. Okay, so let's put our six there. Eight times six equals 49. Well, eight times five equals 40. So eight times six must equal 48. So it's just one more group of eight. So that one's a no. All right, last one in this question. Hmm, times 30 equals 180. We'll put our six there. And is that true? Six times 30 equals 180. Well, six times three equals 18. So six times 30 must equal 180. Boom. All right, number seven. Each train can carry 20 cars. Use the number line to find how many cars six trains can carry. All right, let's make sure we have the picture in our head. Each train can carry 20 cars. All right, so in my mind, I literally like do one of these. That's a train and we've got 20 cars. All right, use the number line to find out how many, car, um, how many cars six trains can carry. So we need six of these, but we're gonna use a number line to help us, okay? So let's check it out. Move this down. All right. So here we go. You can see our number line is actually counting by what? That's very important because we are actually going to be counting by 20 this many times. So we're going to start at our zero. And we're not going to go to 10. We're going to go to 20. That will be our first hop. So that represents one train, and inside, you know, the one train, we've got 20 cars. So we took a hop of 20, right, like that. Okay, so then we have to do that six times in all, so five more times. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, we landed right here. So uh, let's see, six groups of 20 cars equals 120. So our answer is 120 cars. All right, number eight. Ooh, a picture. Samantha made this multiplication model. Complete the equation that represents this model. All right, before we look at anything else, Let's look at just this. What do you see? What do you notice? What do you wonder? I'm going to give you just a moment. All right. So I noticed that these were laid out kind of in groups. I noticed that there were three groups. So this is how I saw it. Maybe you saw it a little bit differently, but I'm going to guess that many of you saw groups. Okay. So I'm seeing that this is three groups of, and then inside of each group, there are 30. So three groups of 30. So like that. Three groups of 30. And then in all, I knew 30 plus 30 plus 30 would make 90. So I'm thinking that would really help me because I'm thinking three, remember this means groups of three, groups of 30 makes 90. So you could also think about it as um, 30 groups of three make 90. Those would both be correct. Okay, number nine. A printer prints newsletters for many groups every month. Which group uses the greatest number of pieces of paper? All right, so we need to know who to talk about uh, using less paper. I'm just kidding. All right, so we have to figure out who's using the greatest paper. So we've got the group name, number of pieces of paper in the newsletter, and then the number of copies of newsletter printed. All right, so the garden ladies, they have five pieces of paper in a newsletter, and then they 
print 70 copies. The Book Lovers Club has six pieces of paper in their newsletter, and they print 80 copies. Okay, so hold up. We can eliminate one of these right now. Which one can we eliminate? We can eliminate the garden ladies because they have fewer um, pieces of paper in the newsletter and they print fewer copies. So right away, we know that the garden ladies are going to be out. Sorry, garden ladies. Boom, you're out. Okay, so moving on. Model train fans. Well, they print seven newsletters, or excuse me, they have seven pieces of paper in their newsletter, and then 60 copies are printed. Well, they have more pieces of paper, but they don't um, print as many, so we have to do, ma do the math there. All right, same for Travel Cup Club. We've got to do the math for those. So we were able to eliminate Garden Ladies, but now we've got to keep on working. So here we go. Book Lovers Club, BLC. Six times, I think I'm going to do eight tens. That really worked for me last time. So five times eight is 40. Six times eight is 48. So 48 tens would be equal to 480. All right. Now we're on to model train fans. All right. So the model train fans have... 7 times 6 tens. All right, 7 times 6. You can think about 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 6 is one more group of 7. 42 tens, which is the same as order 20. And then the travel club is, let's see, they have 8 times 50, 5 tenths, and that equals 8 times 5 is 40, times 10 is 400. Whoop. Okay, so who has the most? Readers everywhere, you can rejoice. The Book, Lover Cl Book Lovers Club wins. All right, so we have the Book Lovers Club as the winner with 480 pieces of paper. Now, you have a little blue line on yours to write your answer. Okay, so make sure you put your answer there. Number 10, a store has 30 boxes of melons. All right, each box holds four bags. Each bag holds two melons, 30 boxes. Each box holds four bags, each bag holds two melons. What is the total number of melons in the store? All right, you guys, can you imagine trying to draw out 30 boxes and putting the melons and the bags and all that stuff in there? That would be so much work, but we could imagine just one of the boxes, right? That might help us. So here's a box, and inside each box we know we have four bags. So let's do that. We'll make that a bag. That's a bag, and then we'll do two more bags. So inside each box, there are two bags. Oh, hello, there are four bags. And inside each box, <laughs> sorry, I keep messing up. And inside each bag are two melons. There's a melon, there's a melon. There's a melon, there's a melon. And that one's like a snowman melon. There's a melon, and there's a melon. Okay, so this really helps me visualize what one of them will look like. So now I can see that um, each box has four bags, four bags, and then inside each bag are two melons. So really, that's representing four groups of two, which is eight melons per box. Okay, you can actually see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight melons per box. Now what we have to do is um, do 30 boxes times eight melons per box. So 30 
boxes times eight melons per box will equal our answer. Now you might want to solve it by thinking about three tens times eight. Three tens times eight is 24. And then we multiply that by 10 and it's 240. All right, so we're gonna make sure to write 240 melons. Next, number 11. Heather's puppy weighs 23 pounds. All right, I love this story already. He has been gaining three pounds every month as he grows. Okay. If this pattern continues, how much will the puppy weigh five months from now? All right, so, so far we know currently, right now he's 23 pounds, and he's gaining three pounds every month. And we are trying to find out how much he will weigh five months from now. Okay, so let's see. I'm thinking, let's make a little chart here, or table. So right now, he's 23 pounds. One month from now, we'll figure out two, three months from now, four months from now, five months from now. All right, so let's do this. Woo, got a little crooked on me. All right, so right now he has 23 pounds. Have you guys ever seen this crazy abbreviation for pounds? It's LBS, is that weird or what? All right, so this means pounds right here. So next month we know he's going to be three more pounds. So 23 plus three is 26. And then 26 plus three is 29. 29 plus three. Did I say 26 plus nine? 26 plus three is 29. 29 plus three is... Me too. 32 plus 3 is 35. 35 plus 3 is 38. So five months from now, he will be 38 pounds. So let's circle that or highlight that one. And then, of course, we're going to put on our blue line 38 pounds. All right, number 12, Tim. He is going to be describing a pattern to us, which we are in luck because we just looked at a little bit of um, a pattern before this. So Tim describes a pattern. He says the rule for the pattern shown in the table is add three. Is his rule correct? Explain how you know. Okay, so first, this is representing the number of packages. This is representing the number of markers. Okay. So let's take a moment to look at this. In one package, we get four markers. Okay. Well, I can see how he'd say add three. But then I'm imagining myself standing there in the Target shopping center where we all spend way too much money, you guys. And I can imagine myself holding two packages of markers. Well, I'm not going to just add three more markers. I'm going to add a whole nother pack. So I can see where he thought it was add three here. So that worked for the first one. From one plus three does make four. But does two plus three make eight? The answer to that is no. Does three plus three make 12? No. So the rule is not really add three. Tim, unfortunately, has made a mistake. What is the real answer? All right, I'm back. Speckles had something to say. Sorry, you guys. Okay, so um, if we look for a pattern, we go from 1 to 4, 2 to 8, 3 to 12. Or you might just stand there and think about yourself in the Target shopping center like I did and think about if you have one package of markers and it has four markers in there and then you add in a second package 
and then a third package. You're always getting four more markers, right? So let's see. It says, is his rule correct? Well, we already know Tim's rule is not correct. All right, so Tim, I'm sorry, but we got to tell you. Tim's rule is not correct. The rule should be, now remember, every time you get another pack of markers, you're getting four more markers. So the rule should be multiply by four. All right, so we see one times four is four, two times four is eight, three times four is 12. That one works. Here we go, number 13. This thing looks crazy. What is this? This shows a part of a multiplication table. Find the missing numbers. Explain how you found the numbers. Okay, what? We have to look closely. All right, so the first thing I'm seeing is 35 and 40. What number would you be counting by if you counted from 35 and then you went to 40? You, my dears, would be skip counting by five. So this must be the row for fives. Let me just put it over here. Five. Okay. Now, five times what makes 35? Five times seven. And five times eight makes 40. Okay, so now we have like the little pieces of the chart there, right? So we know this is showing us the fifth row and the seventh and eighth columns. Now, that lines up because if I'm now in the sixth row, six times seven does equal 42. All right, so we're in luck. We're doing this right, you guys. Six times eight would be 48. No. Speckles is thinking about marking again. Speckles. Okay, so we've got five, six, this would be seven. Seven times seven is 49. And seven times eight is 56. All right, so now we have to explain. So what should we put? Let's see. I think first we found, we skipped counted by fives going from, from 35 to 40. So that was the fifth row. Five times seven is, oops, is 35 so I knew we had the seventh and eighth column shown you can write something like that your explanation might be a little bit different it doesn't have to be the exact same thing or you might have even found out what the numbers were in a little bit of a different way so make sure you have your explanation Okay, number 14, find a rule for this table. All right, you guys, we're getting, we're getting to be pros at this rule thing. All right, so we've got tanks at the top and fish on the bottom. So if we have three tanks, we have 240 fish. If we have four tanks, we have 320 fish. Five tanks is 400 fish. All right, so let's think about this. I'm just going to, in my mind, think about this as 3 times what makes 24. 4 times what makes 32. 5 times what makes 40. And so on. So I'm just kind of thinking about it as 3 times what is 24 to help me get started. I know it's really 24 tenths. All right, so I know 3 times 8 is 24. So I'm going to try on for size, see if this works out, 3 times 80. That seems to work there. 
is this one, 4 times 80. Would that one give us 320? All right, now I'm going to check all the other ones. 5 times 80 would make 400, so on and so on. Okay, so our rule is multiply by 80. How would the table change if the rule was multiply by 8? Ooh, well, actually, you guys, we used that to help us. So we kind of already know. So let's get to our explanation. The table would change because each product would be 10 times less. Take away a zero. Okay, now I'm gonna fix the spelling up because ah, there we go. All right, so when you take away a zero off a number, what you're really doing is making it worth 10 times less. Number 15, here we go. Devin has 80 books to pack in boxes. Okay, so imagine Devin, she's got 80 books. She packs 20 books in each box. How many boxes does she need? Okay, so we are trying to figure out the number of groups. So in this story, the boxes are representing the number of groups. Oh, that's big. Oh, that's big. Let's make it smaller, you guys. Woo! How about that one? How about even smaller? Let's go smaller. How about that one? All right, so the boxes are the number of groups. Now, we don't know how many boxes she needs. So we're going to put for the number of groups, N. And in each box, she's going to have how many books? 20. And then in the end, she will have packed 80 books. You know what I thought about that? I thought about first the number of groups times 20 books per box equals 80 books in all. Ooh. So write an equation using the letter N to stand for the unknown factor. Explain how to find the unknown factor. Well, guess what? Good news. We just did that. <laughs> so we get to put that right there. N times 20 equals 80. Now, let's explain. All right, so how did we find out? I knew we had to find the number of groups of boxes that I needed, which is n. Each box got 20 books with 80 books packed in all. Okay, so we have to figure out the answer now. So what times 20 equals 80? How many times would you have to count by 20 to get to 80? Let's do it. Ready? 20, 40, 60, 80. Okay, so that means n equals 4. 20, 40, 60, 80. We had to count by 24 times. All right, so she would need four boxes. Moving on, number 16. Here we go. The bookstore has six shelves of books about animals. All right, so imagine six shelves of books. All books are about animals. All right, now imagine that there are 30 books on each shelf. All right, so let's get this out. Six shelves. There are 30 books on each shelf. How many books about animals does the bookstore have? All right, so let's think about that. So we're doing six times three tens, right? So six times 30. Six times 30 is the same as six times three tens. So now it says share a uh, shade, right? It says shade. 
squares to make a diagram to show how you can use the distributive property to find the number of books about animals in the bookstore. Okay, so now I've got this giant thing. But when I look right here at six times three tens, it can really help me. So I'm thinking over here, I'm going to make this side worth the six. Let's do that. So we've got six here. I'm going to count down six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I have three tens. Well, guess what? These things are broken into ten. So three tens. So this is one ten. This is two tens. And this would make the third ten here. So 10 plus 10 plus 10 is still 30. All right. Woo! Get a little crazy with my line. Okay. Shade squares to make a diagram to show how you can use the distributive property to find the number of books about animals in the store. Well, guess what? All we need to do now is shade. All right. Let's do it. So, hey, hey, we'll just shade the parts that we just did there. Don't let your shading get crazy like mine. Mine is a little out of control. Okay. So, I know 6 times 10 or 10 times 6 is, let's see, let's see if you can see this, 60. Barely. So then we have 60 again and 60 again. 60 plus 60 plus 60 is 180. All right. So here I'm going to just explain what I did, but I'm going to explain with numbers. All right. So here we go. Six times three tens is the same as six times 10 plus 10 plus 10. You can see that in the diagram, right? So six times 30 changed into six times three tens. Here's one 10, two tens, and three tens. Then we did six times 10 plus, let's put those in parentheses just because we can see the grouping a little bit better. 6 plus 10 plus another 6, six times 10. I heard my mistake. Plus another 6 times 10. Okay, so we knew then that that was 60 plus 60 plus 60, which equals 100. Okay, 80. <laughs> Just checking. Just checking. All right, here we go. Number 17. Cody saves all his nickels. Today he is getting them out of his piggy bank and wrapping them to take to the bank. Now, maybe you've never seen this before, but when I was a kid, this was a big day because there was a special paper wrapper that you can put your nickels in and then a special paper wrapper for your quarters and then they would you would take them to the, to the bank and they'd give you dollar bills for all of your change so it was kind of a, a fun thing all right so let's think about that cody saves all his nickels today he's getting them out of his piggy bank and wrapping them to take to the bank he finds he has 360 nickels it takes 40 nickels to fill each paper wrapper and make a roll. How many wrappers does he need? Alrighty, let's think. Hmm. So he's got 360 nickels. We know that for sure. What else do we know for sure? It takes 40 nickels to fill each paper wrapper. Okay, so how many wrappers does he need? So what I'm thinking about that, I'm thinking about 
we need to figure out how many groups he's going to have. So again, the number of groups is going in the front. So here's my number of groups. Let's get my pen out. So we don't know how many groups of wrappers he's going to need. That's going to be our N. The groups go, go in the front for multiplication. Times, all right, 40 nickels in each group or in each wrapper will make a total of 360. So also, you can think about how many times would you have to count by 40 to get to 360? All right, so maybe you know how many times you'd have to get, count by four to get to 36. That's kind of what I'm thinking about, but I'm also thinking about um, how many times I would have to count by four to get to 40, because 36 is right next door to 40 when you're counting by fours. So I'd have to count by four, four 10 times to get to 40. So that means I'd have to count by fours nine times to get to 36. So my N must be nine. All right, so we use place value, you guys, or at least I did. Okay, so I'm gonna explain. I use place value. Find out the value of n. I know 10 times 4 is 40. So 9 times 4 must be 36. So 9 times 40 would make 360. All right. We are getting to the last question. We've got Reuben, and Reuben is collecting cans for a recycling contest at school. He makes two pans. No, he makes two plans to try to collect the most cans. Plan A, collect 20 cans each week for nine weeks. All right, plan B, collect 30 cans each week for seven weeks. All right, so we've got, we've got 20 times nine that we have to solve. And plan B, we have to solve 30 times seven. All right, so let's see if we can figure out the answers. 20 times 9 is the same as 10 times 9 plus another 10 times 9. Or you could think of it as 2 tens times 9. So that would make 180. 3 tens times 7 equals 21 tens, which is the same as 210. Part A, which plan should Reuben use? Well, I'm going to assume Reuben wants to have the most number of cans in the end, so Reuben should choose plan B. All right, part B, explain how you made your choice. All right, so let's see. We need to move this guy up a little bit so we can help Reuben explain. Okay, so let's see. Um... I figured out by using place value, the value of each plan. Plan A was 180 and plan B was 210. Ruben, Ruben will collect more cans using plan B. So that is our answer. All right, kids, that is the end of our review. Just remember, you can use place value and the distributive property to really help you multiply. All right, see you next time. Bye.